So, you want to learn how to use the Curves tool. Well, you better go get a cup of coffee because this is going to take a while. The Curves tool is one of the oldest Photoshop tools. been around for some 20 years now. What we're going to do is go through the steps of utilizing the tool. So I'm going to teach you the physical aspects of it. However, the actual skill is something that you're going to have to practice and spend many hours working on because it's not something that you just, oh, this is how we do it. Um, so let's just kind of get into this. I had chosen this image because of this off cast, which comes from fluorescent lights or, or light bulbs, uh, uh, the soft light. Uh, within lamps and whatever. So uh, a lot of different lighting creates this odd color cast and I'm going to use that to uh, correct with the curves tool. This is uh, Photoshop CS5 which has an adjustment palette. Otherwise you can find the tool under the layers with this icon and then go down to curves. But for this video I'm going to be using the palette so I'm going to click on the curves and what comes up is an open box with a line through it and just as a side note back in earlier photoshops this line went in the other direction and we're going back many 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 years but I am just mentioning it just in case you happen to have one of those incredibly old versions of photoshop okay so uh, I do have to get moving here uh, what we have here is the usual um, tools of um, the white eyedropper, a neutral eyedropper, and a black eyedropper. This is to set the whites, the neutrals, and the darks. Um, I'll be going into that in a little bit. Um, there is this curve button where you can modify it as a curve, and then here is a pen which allows you to edit it like a pen tool and I will show you the difference the standard is the S curve I'm gonna get this pen tool out of the way and show you why I don't actually use it the intent of it is you're supposed to be able to draw a curve okay and as you draw you can see it adjusted the image see how it does that Okay, so if I'm in here and I'm actually trying to do um, an accurate retouching, and I'm trying to, can you see what it's doing? See, it, it, I don't know, I don't know, it's, it's not a way that I've ever used it, and I certainly don't know any accurate way of doing it. So, uh, with that said, we are going to go back to the actual curve way of doing things. Um, okay, uh, I'll go back to this finger tool at the end. Um, up here at the top we have an RGB as well as a red, green, and blue options so that each channel can be worked on in independently. We have an auto button and then of course we have just some presets which we're not going to touch. Okay, uh, down here at the bottom are for the adjustments palette itself, not necessarily for the curve tool so we're just going to ignore that so back to the actual tool itself the way that this works is this dark this dark arrow here represents the dark point and you can see a gradient that runs this way and then run that runs this way the tool kind of works like in a two-dimensional three-dimensional sort of way it's 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 incredibly hard to describe because you're working with the darks and the lights at the same time as well as the midtones, the three quarters and the quarters. So let me, let me try and get into this. The what this at this point I'm clicking on the black point and I'm going to click on it and I'm going to bring it up. Notice how the image gets lighter as I go towards this white in this gradient. Then when I go horizontally it's running it dark along that um, along that gradient when I grab this other side and I go to the left it's whitening out the image and then when I come down 
it's darkening the image. What's actually happening is this is your white point, this is your dark point. This is this is the 100% of white, this is 100% of black, and if I grab this white, what I'm actually affecting on the, the, the littlest moves is I'm affecting the white areas of the image. And as I continue to go down the gradient, it's grabbing more and more colors until we finally reach black. So at this point, all it's doing is grabbing the absolute white areas, like here, and I come down, and it's bringing it to the absolute dark. So it's making the whitest point the blackest point, which is why the whole image goes. So when I come down here, think of this as zero, which is why it made more sense when Photoshop was the other way around. If you grab the this, zero, this point and think of it as zero, zero color, and I bring it down to here, what you're actually doing is taking the zero color, which is over here, and by bringing it down, which is actually 25%, which is the quarter point, one, one over four. Um, uh, I am uh, American, so I don't know how other countries, um, how they would refer to this, um, but I can only go with what I know. Um, so by bringing this down 25%, I'm adding 25% tone within this whitest area. If I come down to the halfway point, now I've added 50% of tone in the whitest point. So it's no longer zero, it's 50. If I bring it down a little bit more to the three-quarter point, which is 75%, now I've added 75% tint into what is otherwise the um, uh, the white point in the image. And then when I bring it all the way down, I've added 100% black into the whitest image. And what happens is when I'm starting here, and let's say, for example, I do come down halfway, I'm affecting not only the whitest point, but the gradient of the image. So which was darker over here, let's say 50% darker, is now 25% darker than it was. Okay, so now as I go down to here to 75%, the image as a whole is now 75% darker than it was. Okay, when I come over to the dark side, the exact opposite is happening. The higher I bring this up, the lighter the dark points get. I've added a 25% ghost to the image because what used to be 100% black in here is now only 75% black. By coming up, to the halfway point, it's taking the blackest black and changing it to 50% of that 100% black. And, and again, as I'm moving up the curve, I'm also affecting everything from the 100% black, the 99% black, the 80% black, the 75% black. I'm affecting everything as I go until it, the entire image becomes 100% white because 100% black has been made to 100% white. This is an incredibly hard thing to for, for a novice to comprehend. And I'm doing my best, and I'm not sure uh, what more I can actually say to, to get that concept across to you. Um, the same thing is happening when I'm going in the opposite direction. If I'm dragging this black to here, I've effectively taken everything that was 100% black and everything that was 75% black is now 100% black. And what used to be 50% black is now becoming 75% because the way that the cur this curve is working. And we haven't even gotten to the curve part yet. So as I bring it over here, now what was a 50% tint in here has now become 100% uh, black. What was 25% black is now 50% black. Okay? Um, and then it goes to 100% black. Um, which is odd that it does this, but it does do this. Um, it's one of those oddities. I'm sure there's a mathematical equation, but it's never actually done 100% black. Um, 
I don't know why. Um, again, this is making this is making 100% white, which actually isn't 100% uh, of the blackest point. Um, I don't know. It's one of those things. And then, of course, when it comes down, we've now made it 100% black of the white. So, this is the first part of the concept of this. And there's there's a whole other uh, a piece to this because we haven't even done the curves part yet. Okay, um, this is just the basic concept of of manipulating the lights become dark and the darks become light. Okay, um, I'm just going to add some more information uh, because I do have time, and then we're going to do a second video which is going to um, get into more uh, curve related uh, topics and actually manipulating this image so that. The, this orange cast goes away. Um, by clicking on the uh, the white point, what we're actually going to do is set a white point within this image. So if I want this to be white, I click on that, and what it did was it created that point, not color-wise, but density-wise. And it took that and made that the absolute zero. Okay, let me let me let me do that again. If if I grab this black here, that is now white because I'm setting that white point within the image. So if we really do want to set a white point, we click on the whitest point in the image and we click on it. Now here's the thing. When pictures are taken, often there is a whitest point, but it may not be the point that you want. So, for example, I can click this and make that the whitest point, and then I can click this black tool and say that this point right here is the blackest point, and then it fills in the uh, that that difference. And as you can see, what it's trying to do here in the palette is it's saying that because I said that point was absolute black it moved the blue channel over to here and it moved the red channel over to here and it left the green channel mostly the same um, and what it's doing is with the white point it's grabbing one uh, one of the corners and then when I grab the black it creates the other corner and then I can also set, set a middle point in here for it and then it actually creates a curve because we set the middle Okay, um, I don't actually use use these. I mean, certainly you can, um, but I, I'd be using the levels tool to be adjusting the density within the image. And um, the, the, this tool is just one of the tools, you know, used to correct an image. So it there's times to use these different functionality and there's times not to use it. One other thing that I can show you uh, before this video ends, part one, is I can click on this tool right here, which is the little finger tool. And um, this is allowing me to click within the image. And I can, as I move across the image, look at the palette itself. And you can see that little circle moving around with it. Okay? What it's saying is. Right now, I'm holding it over a black point, so on the t palette, it's on the black point. If I come over to a white point, it's moving it over the white point. So for the sake of argument, if I click on a white p a mid midtone, if you can see it went right into the middle, 50%, I can click, and then I can move up, and I can move down. Okay, and see what it's doing to with the tool. So if I come over here to the white point, whitest, See how it moves that up and down? Okay. And then also I can come into the blacks and I can do the same thing. The second half of this video, which gets into much more uh, intricate uh, retouching with the uh, curves tool, can be found at www.theartofretouching.com, where you will need to sign up as a free member, and then you can um, get an access to the rest of this video, as well as uh, many other videos that uh, we are working on over on the website. Again, it is free, so why don't you come on over and join the community.